Restructurings, asset sales, cap hikes, European banks are in crisis. How successfully are they finding their way out? Beat Wiedmann, European banks have really struggled to recover from the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. What's happened? Well, the European banks um, never rehabilitated really after 2008 and the economic environment was very uh, deflationary. So we had risk aversion on the investor side and also in the real economy in terms of, uh, of lending. And then, of course, huge overcapacities which have never been addressed really in Europe. Why have their counterparts in the U.S. managed that process since the financial crisis so much better? Well, the U.S. counterparties were forced basically by their policymakers, um, the SEC, the Fed and the Treasury, to consolidate their businesses, to write off bad debt, to uh, have um, uh, mergers, uh, take new licenses, rehabilitate uh, basically their capital position, which allowed them basically to, to turn the corner. And in today's environment, with probably less regulation ahead, uh, being able to deploy capital into growth strategies. Closer to home, here in Switzerland, we see Credit Suisse going through a multi-year, very deep restructuring. How optimistic are you for the prospects of that? Well, the track record of uh, universal banks in Europe, including Credit Suisse, is, is, is rather bad. They keep restructuring every business cycle, so they have not a lot of credibility. And in most cases, uh, in, in capital increases, they have thrown good money after uh, bad money. So um, uh, there is hope, but hope is not a strategy. One part of Credit Suisse's strategy is a partial IPO of the Swiss business. Do you have a view on that? Well, I think basically it makes sense in, in, in some form to dismantle the existing universal banks. And the Swiss business is sizable, uh, stable and, and profitable. So shareholders would have a clear choice. And I think Credit Suisse has all potential in the international business to, uh, to develop into a kind of uh, super merchant bank, great brand name presence, uh, history. Um, and uh, I only hope that they uh, stick to their guns and, um, and, and, and will deliver some consistency in strategy. And we see a similar type of restructuring going on at Deutsche Bank. Uh, are you similarly kind of downbeat? There? Uh, I think I'm much more downbeat on Deutsche because uh, Deutsche lacks the stable um, domestic uh, retail market and the stable contribution from wealth and asset management really. Um, so uh, Deutsche is still too, uh, too big for its own good and there's another capital increase and I think even that partial floating of the asset management is a half-baked measure and not a real change in strategy. So really, would you invest in European financial stocks at all, given those views? Well, exactly for that reason and looking at the valuation, I would invest in them actually, but you would have to have some patience probably. But I think the macro environment in Europe in terms of reflation, in terms of European banking union forcing them now to, uh, to consolidate and ultimately also improved investor sentiment, business confidence and consumer confidence is leading to some improved prospects for banks and that's not yet in the price. What sort of alternatives do investors have? Well, they always have uh, alternatives. Uh, we live in a large world, but if you look at uh, risk return here, um, this is pretty interesting. I would, I would probably take uh, an index exposure to European banks on one side, and on the other side, I would probably um, invest in some special situations, just as uh, some activist investors do that, um, uh, because there is, of course, some potential, but that's very company specific. Thank you very much for those very interesting views. We'll look forward to watching that unfold in the coming months and years. Thank you, Beat Wittmann. That was Fin News TV in cooperation with Dukaskapi TV. Please join us next time.